are for our third session of day one of the online conference on President Lincoln, brought to you by Smithsonian Education. Our next speaker is going to be talking to us today about stamp stories, but I want to remind you how to interact with us. There is a box on the left side of the screen where you can submit questions uh, or comments, and we invite you to um, submit questions and comments that relate to the current topic. We have many different topics on Abraham Lincoln, so um, hopefully we'll talk just about today's topic in that box. But you're going to find that there's many different opportunities for you to interact throughout this session, and we'll be introducing those as we get to them. Let me also point out that if you need any technical assistance, you can write to us at help at learningtimes.net. And don't forget, all of these sessions are being recorded. So you can come back and watch it again if you wish. Or if you need to leave and go to another class or do another activity, um, you'll know that you can come back and catch it later. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. And it gives me great pleasure to turn the floor over to Jeff Mead, who is uh, the School and Tours Coordinator at the National Postal Museum here in Washington, DC, one of the Smithsonian units that are based here. His session is called Stamp Stories, Philatelic Images of Abraham Lincoln and the Civil War. And I hope you'll join me in welcoming Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jonathan. Well, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, virtual visitors. Welcome to the National Postal Museum's activity for the Smithsonian Lincoln Conference. Got a lot of fun things to talk about today, and we'll be doing some activities about uh, discussing Abraham Lincoln history as we would see it on stamps. Now, I'm joined today with uh, uh, the museum's Education Technology Projects Coordinator, Ms. Orly Henry. And I'm glad to uh, have her along with me. She'll be answering a lot of our are posting a lot of our poll questions and helping with any discussion forums we might have. But I also want to thank, um, right off the bat, the folks at Learning Time. They've been very, very helpful in getting this activity transitioned to a virtual format. So it's really quite exciting. Today, we will be taking you on a brief tour of the museum's collection using a special website that the museum has developed called uh, Rago. And most importantly, we will use collections of US postage stamps to discuss aspects of Abraham Lincoln's life and legacy. The stamp activity, what we call stamp stories, connects very well with the conference theme of emphasizing images of history and primary sources uh, in classrooms all over the United States. Several collections of stamps will be presented to um, all of our participants today, along with some thought-provoking questions. And participants can offer ideas about the stamps in chat rooms based on the different grade levels that uh, all of you teach or different grade levels that all of you might happen to be in if you're students. We'll pose uh, several questions about each collection, and Oralee will be posting poll questions like the one that she's about to post now. So have fun, and uh, we'll get some interaction started. I'd like to start with this first page that says, Welcome to the National Postal Museum. Uh, the National Postal Museum features one of the largest collections of stamps in the world, but also features an extensive collection of objects documenting the history of American communication. And the collection began in 1888 with one of the largest blocks of Confederate stamps ever found. So the timing of today's conference is very important to us. And you can actually see the stamp down in the corner that says National Postal Museum is actually a Civil War soldier um, with his drum. And there's also a Pony Express writer there as well. The museum features guided school tours that emphasize American history and letter writing. School tours almost always feature Oni the dog, who's also on this page. He, Oni was the unofficial mascot of the railway post office. And he, he's one of our stranger objects on display. Um, but he's extraordinarily popular regardless of age. Now, the activity we do today actually targets the upper elementary, middle school, and high school audiences. We know that field trips for these grades can be difficult. So we are actively working on developing an activity emphasizing the digital collections found on the museum's companion website, Arago. Now, let me just ask, how do stamps actually relate to the history curriculum? One of the things that I've emphasized with stamp stories is just the vast variety of different images that appear on US postage stamps. There's hundreds of stamps reflecting US presidents. There's dozens of stamps that reflect significant battles throughout American military history. There's extensive stamps documenting the movement of people and goods all across America throughout history. And there's dozens and dozens of stamps that show the contributions of authors, artists, and scientists. 
And one of the things we'll be talking about today to wrap up a little bit are some social revolutions, especially thinking about Abraham Lincoln and his legacy regarding slavery and really what that might actually mean when we document that visually on a postage stamp. So what exactly is Stamp Stories? Stamp Stories began as a docent-led activity at the museum, really emphasizing the connection be between secondary education curriculum standards and images found on US postage stamps. Now, the program focuses on building collections of stamps featuring images related to a particular theme or idea. The program provides teachers an opportunity to teach history using these visual resources while providing students an opportunity to interpret their learning in a new and creative way. The program usually begins with a topic, uh, usually generated by the teacher, relating to some classroom material. Uh, depending on what historical moment you're teaching at the time, um, teachers, you really have a lot of flexibility in determining what are some of these different topics. Now, students are set into small groups. And each individual student sorts through large and varied collections of stamps that we provide at the museum. Once students identify five or six stamps relating to a topic, they discuss their small collection with other members in their small group. Now, after each student describes their collection, the group then determines a team collection representing their understanding of the topic. And once team collections are made, each team takes a turn describing their images to the group, and the groups debate whose collections are most reflective of the topic. So it's a lot of fun. There's a really a, a, such a variety of different images on stamps that it gives all of you, teachers and students alike, the ability to really piece together different aspects of uh, history and different aspects of the topic presented in a unique way. So there might not be a right or wrong way to go about doing that. Well, now the activity works very well as test preparation. Um, especially when students have built a base level of knowledge of history. So I think teachers and students alike would probably appreciate the fact that you don't have to just review chapter one or chapter two when you're getting ready for the test. You can actually do something like stamp stories. Now one of the things I wanted to emphasize with this picture is how we're transitioning this program today. Originally stamp stories started at the museum, but I did have the pleasure to actually bring this activity to one of the Smithsonian Teachers Nights in the Durham Museum in Omaha, Nebraska. So hello, Durham. I know that you guys are uh, tuned in to us, and Jonathan showed you the picture. And the picture down on the left of this page actually shows me presenting stamp stories to a group of teachers. Now, at, I actually did bring uh, about 20 pounds of postage stamps to that Teachers Night activity. So what you might not be able to see in that, uh, in that photograph is that each one of those tables has several thousand stamps on it. And 20 pounds of US postage stamps is about 80,000 postage stamps. So there were stamps everywhere. It was a lot of fun. Now, I partnered with the Omaha Philatelic Society in order to obtain stamps and materials for that Omaha Teachers Night. Um, and one of the things that I've had teachers doing is actually having these stock cards that you see in the right-hand side. These are very nice for holding your stamp collections uh, when, when you're working with actual stamps in the classroom. But the virtual-based stamp stories actually helps with the uh, difficulty in finding enough stamps to work with. And that's mainly because the Arago website is the only website in the world to feature a digitized example of every US postage stamp. Let me go ahead. I want to take you on a brief tour through Arago now. And you can actually find this by um, clicking straight to arago.si.edu, or you can also access it from the Postal Museum's website. Now, I've modified today's program um, from the original version, mainly because we have so many participants, but also because the participants are all over the country. We have a lesson plan for stamp stories available on the museum's exhibit hall. Um, the, the feature in the exhibit hall for the Lincoln Conference. So make sure you take a look at that, too. Now, there's also a um, how-to guide on Arago that's very, very helpful if anyone would like um, some additional information on how to use Arago in your classroom. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. Well, the Arago website is very unique. And we have digitized thousands and thousands of different stamps here in the Postal Operations section. 
Arago has essentially bro broken our collection into two different aspects. We have the postal operations, which really documents the history of some of the postal service. This is where you'll find um, some of the airplanes, you'll find stagecoaches, you'll find trains, you'll find a lot of letters, a lot of material related to actually delivering and maintaining those lines of uh, mail delivery. But the philatelic side is much more in terms of the stamp collections and philatelic material. So those are the two areas that you can go to. Now down here in the corner is the featured exhibit. And um, the featured exhibit is something very interesting. We take collections of stamps based around particular ideas and create an entire museum exhibit accessible in the virtual world. So today's featured exhibit has actually just gone live since yesterday afternoon. And it's all about the life story of Abraham Lincoln as it appears in different pieces of postage. And some of these postage stamps are actually um, all over the world. So quite a few of uh, Abraham Lincoln's stamps are actually commemorated from different, uh, different countries all over the globe. Now, the next page that we're going to is the search feature. You can search Arago very easily. And you can search either the philatelic collection or you can search the um, postal operations collection. And I went ahead and just did a screen capture of one of the stamps that I happened to have found. I punched in the name Abraham Lincoln and got dozens of different options. Abraham Lincoln's been featured on lots and lots of US postage stamps. And the particular stamp that you're looking at here is actually part of a Civil War series that was issued in 1995. Now, each time that you pull up a search, uh, a searched object, you'll have a description of the object here and how it relates to some of the other materials, but also a little bit about how that stamp was produced or any uh, interesting story. Up in the corner here, we've got what's called the My Collection feature. Because as you search for different objects in, Amer in Arago's collection, you can actually save them into your own personal collection. Now, what I've done is a screen capture here that just shows you some of the different stamps that I've pulled into my collection. I've got about 250 stamps, and the stamps that I've put together really reflect some of the different tour ideas that I work with on school tours and a lot of different things. So some of the ones that I work with are uh, preschool audiences and some of the kindergarten and second grade students. And I've got an entire collection here of 89 different stamps that I found relating to the Civil War. Now, the neat thing about the Arago My Collection feature is that you can organize all of your collections according to these different topics. And all you would do is literally drag and drop different stamps into different topics. Now, teachers, the neat part about this is that you can have students actually organize their collections based on these different topical ideas. And they can actually email these stamps back to you. So it's really pretty a neat way to um, send the students home with some additional really creative homework opportunities. And students, it's a great opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about the topic as well, since most of these stamps have uh, these additional write-ups about who that person might have been. And you can save those stamps. If you work in a small group format, you can actually email those stamps back and forth to each other. So it's really pretty cool. It's a really neat feature. So let's see. What we're going to be doing today is I'm going to introduce you to some of the different stamp images. And what we're going to do is um, take a look at some of the different following slides. And they're examples of different stamp topics related to Abraham Lincoln and Civil War history. And we will use these stamp images to interpret American history by using visual thinking strategies. An interpretation can use one or all of the stamps to describe a collection. Now, we've taken this in a little different, uh, little different format today. Usually, I pose the topic, and then I have students go in and search in stamp collections or on Arago to actually put together their own stamp collections. But what I've done today is actually made the collection myself, and then I'll be asking you to actually interpret that collection for me. So let's take a look. We've got the topic today of territorial expansion prior to the Civil War. We also have the dividing line, politics of the Union. We also have the Civil War itself. Civil War has dozens of different postage stamps that relate to it. We also have Lincoln and the legacy of slavery. Abraham Lincoln has really become a symbol 
of um, civil rights and freedom. And putting his image on a postage stamp is really quite interesting. And how does that postage stamp reflect those original intentions of what uh, Abraham Lincoln might have stood for? So let's go ahead and get into this. And I'll show you how we're going to be discussing these today. Pull up a new chat box here. By the way, Jeff, we have a number of questions coming in already. I just want to let everyone know that we're going to uh, be taking questions at the end as well. Okay. Um, but there are a couple of questions about the Postal Museum collection that maybe I'll mention just one real sure. quickly. How many uh, stamps, if you know, are there that specifically have Abraham Lincoln on them? Oh, gosh. I Honestly, I'm not sure of the answer to that. I know that there's lots and lots of them, and I think that I've got... 25, maybe 30 of them in my own collection, but I'm not entirely sure of the entire answer there. All right, good question. That's a good research question for some. That's somebody. a great research question. They might question. even begin to use Arago to do some of that research. Themselves. You can find the answer to that on Arago, and in particular, I would take a look at uh, that Arago featured collection featuring Abraham Lincoln. Really, one more quick question before we start the activity. Sure. Um, well, actually, you'll tell us later. People want to know what where the name Arago came from, but let's go ahead and start uh. the activity, and then you can tell us. Okay. Well, we've got topic number one up here on the board, and I'm going to be asking you some questions about these different stamps. Now, as you click on these different stamps, you can actually uh, pull up larger images of them. So I'll go ahead and let everyone play with those, and I'm going to write up in the top uh, left box in the notepad some of the different questions. And uh, let me point out that the stamps on the top of the screen are clickable. Um, and we do ask during this activity that you use the same kind of behavior you would use in your own classroom if you're a student who's participating. Remember, this is a session that's really targeted towards your teachers today, and they've done a very nice thing in to invite you to join them as their colleagues, as their professional peers in this event. So hopefully you'll um, act like a teacher, and you will be um, as professional as they are. Over to you, Jeff. Great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and type into the note box the first question. And you can see Jeff is a very quick typist, and you can see what he's typing there in the top left corner. So I'll go ahead and type up uh, this first question here. And the way that I've broken this page is into three different chat boxes, and they're really based around what kind of um, uh, what kind of uh, grade level you might be teaching, or what kind of grade level you might actually be in. So really think about how you would answer this when you are. Um, teaching this material to your students and possibly even how you would expect your students to be answering when you post these different questions. So my question is, do you see elements of manifest destiny represented in the ter Kansas Territorial Centennial, which is the large orange stamp that I've pulled up? Okay, great. Thanks, Kevin. Excellent. Great. I see some great answers coming in here. So we see the winds of change, we see the providence, we see the wagons represent manifest destiny. Okay. Interesting. Westward movement, great. Remember, you can click on each of the stamps above and it'll make that stamp larger so you can get a, a closer look at, the, at each stamp. Interesting. There's a question here. How were stamps made back then? Stamp production has gone through several different phases, and these stamps were actually engraved stamps. Um, really pretty interesting. And you can find out more about that by opening this stamp in the Arago featured collection. Nice. So there's definitely quite a few different answers coming in about the wagons, about um, the cattle. Anything in particular about having the wagons and the cattle in the sky itself. Almost a holy train. I like that. Crossing the Great Divide. Great. Now, I've based a lot of these different um, questions on some of the different curriculum standards I've seen uh, highlighted in the Washington, D.C. community, uh, teaching uh, curriculum standards. And the upper elementary school students really think about manifest destiny in terms of geographical expansion. But the middle school students really focus on some of the different political speeches that were coming out. Um, and that's why my next question is going to be about Sam Houston. So let me go ahead and post another question here. Um, 
And while you type that question in, Jeff, uh, we have someone saying that uh, the stamps almost look majestic in some cases. Uh, 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 the clouds make it dreamlike, part of manifest destiny. Interesting. Well, now, why would um, a stamp like this invoking these different kinds of images be so important uh, as part of a postage stamp? What would that actually, what kind of message would that actually say? Would that support the idea of manifest destiny? That's a whole other question in itself. And remember, you can click on the stamps. I've um, uh, it's, There's a question about which one is the Sam Houston stamp. Um, you want to point that out to folks? Sure. And the Sam Houston stamp is the gray stamp that stands like uh, the up and down tri uh, rectangle here. All right. Cool. We're looking at your many comments coming in here. Cool. Thanks, Orly, for jumping in there. I see somebody asked about the first postage stamp. Um, was actually made in Great Britain. It's called the Penny Black. Anybody know who the second stamp producing nation was? It was not the United States. I'll just give you that hint. Someone says England. Great. And I see that... Um, Alex Hyman, one of the creators of the Urago program, is joining our chat room here also. Um, Alex, do you happen to know how many postage stamps have uh, images of Abraham Lincoln on them? We'll see if he'll uh, type in here. <laughs> there was an earlier question about whether the, uh, the National Postal Museum includes stamps from other countries. Ooh, there are a few. There was a series after, just after um, World War II that actually features flags from all over the world with different countries that participated in that kind of alliance. Great. Now, I've, answered an, uh, I've posted another question here. What does that image of Sam Houston say about his historical character? So let me go ahead and pull the Sam Houston stamp back up here. There we go. Um, somebody pointed out that it shows him as a leader, his leadership skills. Great. Sam Houston is actually the only uh, man in American history, I do believe, that actually was the governor of more than one state. He was the governor of Tennessee as well as the governor of Texas. Yeah. Somebody Toby Holmes, there. actually, yep. Yeah. Great. And Jenny says the figures look rough and tumble, uh, more so than a, a clean-cut politician. Very interesting. Kind of looks like a 1950s uh, spaghetti western character to me, which is interesting. <laughs> Just on an aside. So Michelle Lewis from Los Angeles Valley Col uh, College actually says he's holding a weapon, and that might be the most significant aspect. Yeah, he's definitely featured with his gun, and maybe that was part of his historical character. Great. Julie well, says it's, uh, it seems to me that he's a force to be reckoned with. Ah. Well, Sam Houston was indeed a force to be reckoned with. That's for sure. He was very influential in expanding the Texas Territory. Uh, and Alex uh, Heyman has said the oldest, po oldest postage stamp was issued in May 1840 by Great Britain. Correct. Right. Cool. Well, I'm going to go ahead and um, post another topic here. Let's take a look at some of the stamps from the Civil War. Let's see, it's topic number three, so let's do this. And we'll have some new chat boxes here and some new stamps to take a look at. So we've got quite a few new stamps here. Go ahead and um, click on the different stamps and you can highlight some of the different ones. I'm going to go ahead with my first question and ask it about the Gettysburg stamp. There we go. So let me get in and I'll type up my uh, my first question here is coming in. So let's see. All right. By the way, there have been a number of people noting the condition of the stamps that you're showing us, that they're in amazing condition. Uh, Christy just mentioned that as well. Is, is it typical that the National Postal Museums uh, only collect stamps in the most mint condition, or do you actually have some? Well, most of the collections in the Postal Museum's collection, most of the stamps are in very, very good collection. Um, but a lot of the stamps are actually just uh, reflect that different usage throughout history. 
Now, a lot of the um, different stamps are actually going to be canceled stamps. A lot of them are on covers. And part of what you'll actually see in the Abraham Lincoln featured collection on Arago is a lot of the different philatelic material outside of stamp collecting. Um, you'll see some of the different historic envelopes called covers that were issued. And a lot of the covers actually have additional uh, images posted with um, with Abraham Lincoln as well. So our collection is by no means limited to uh, stamps themselves. But it really is a healthy mix. Ideally, we would like to have one of those pristine collections, but sometimes those are really hard to come by, especially if stamps are rare or if even uh, you know some of, the, some of the newer stamps might not be in necessarily the best condition to collect. Great. So let's so see. a lot of people answering your question at the top left about why the Gettysburg stamp is colored in both blue and gray, and does either soldier appear to be winning the fight? Let's see. The Gettysburg, let's see, because one side of the war was blue and one side was gray. Great. Does anybody see one side winning or the other? Nice. Lorraine Fossil from Coffee High School says, Gettysburg was an impasse, a bloody battle, so it's logical it would be blue and gray. Beth Bowen from the National Park Service actually says the Union soldier appears to be winning both because he takes up more of the space and he's leaning forward. A more aggressive stance. Great. Wow, that's really intuitive. Actually, one of the docents at the museum I showed this uh, stamp to the other day said that it's interesting that you can actually see the face of the blue soldier, blue representing the Union forces, but you only see really the backside of the gray soldier, and she thought that might have something to uh, do with it as well. Though the gray side has more energy, the blue side is larger. That's interesting. Why do some postage stamps cost more than other stamps? That's an interesting question also. It kind of depends on how much they weigh and what kind of service you're looking for. There's a lot of different kinds of postal uh, rates available. So stamps really reflect um, some of the different rates, but also some of the stamps we have featured were issued at different time periods. Well, let me ask you another question. Let's pull up this one here, and I'll post my next question. Commemorates the... These are some really wonderful observations you're making about the stamps here. Really, really fantastic. And there's also a few questions which we'll try to get to uh, before the end of the session as well. So thank you for sharing those too. And speaking of questions, here comes Jeff's next one. And Jeff, I'm going to move your first question off to make a little more room for it. All right. No, that makes sense. Thank you, Jonathan. Oop. Sorry, I think, Sorry, I think, I think we're, <laughs> we're, we're battling for the little box at the top left. Sorry about that. Um, uh, and Jacqueline okay, there you go. has some uh, excellent points over on the right. Thank you, Jacqueline. Yes, Jeff. Okay, great. So my next question is, the gray stamp commemorates the last reunion with Confederate veterans. How does this stamp reflect efforts to bring southern states back into the Union after the war? Why would it'd be important for the, for the Postal Service to actually present images of Confederate soldiers on U.S. postage stamps. Actually, and your question ties in very nicely with what the students at uh, Jason Satterfield's class are discussing today. They're talking about conflicts between and within countries. So yeah, it's a I see that. very timely discussion. Great. Well, Mr. Satterfield from Sparkman Middle School, that's really exciting. And I would encourage you definitely to take a look at the Arago search feature because you can pull up different stamps from American conflicts of all different time periods. Really interesting stuff. And it's really interesting to me why would we choose these particular images to be on postage stamps. And that's, in fact, one of the questions that you've, uh, you've received yourself. And Jeff's turning it back out to all of us. I know. That's interesting. So let's see. Have we done any of the poll questions? Uh, let's throw up a poll here. I want to go ahead and open a poll. And here's an interesting idea. We've been talking about some of these different um, 
questions now. So let's go ahead and open this one. Take a look at this poll that I've got, and we can vote on, on some of these different things. So there's the question. Do the meanings of images on stamps change over time? Take a look at the choices Jeff has for you. <laughs> Cool. So let me see here. So interesting. Hoover Middle School says, I think it is, um, based on that question about the Confederate soldier, I think it is to show how they felt about the war at that time. Um, that's really interesting. Uh, would that be, uh, do you think that this image would be presented from kind of a southern Confederate point of view, or would this be largely a national point of view that would incorporate this image? Ooh, interesting. So Jelena Aboud from O'Grady Elementary School says, the elderly gentleman in the stamp is making direct eye contact. Huh. I wonder what d making direct eye contact would actually say. Wow. Cool. So there's definitely some talk about um, this stamp as being an effort to heal some of these different ideas, some of the different ways that we felt uh, after the Civil War. Nice, I like this. Wayne Haney from North Branch High School says just the fact of having a U.S. stamp with the word Confederate on it actually suggests, here, let me see. I don't know if I lost that one. Suggests that the Confederate vets are now part of the United States. That's nice. That's a very thoughtful answer. Well, let's go ahead. I want to post one more collection here, and this will really be about Abraham Lincoln and his legacy in the Civil War, and we'll do this again, and we'll take a look at some new stamp images. There we go. Cool. So they're coming up here. So this page is about Abraham Lincoln and the legacy of slavery, and we've got some different stamps coming up here. This is actually a statue that's in Lincoln Park here in Washington, D.C. It's about six or seven blocks from the National Postal Museum. It's actually widely visited by a lot of people. Um, a lot of people walk their dogs over there. There's a stamp that actually um, commemorates the 100-year anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation. And it's actually the very first stamp that was designed by an African-American artist. This is the Lincoln Memorial, which has been um, very popular in recent memory. I was actually at the Bruce Springsteen concert on the 18th uh, for the inauguration of Barack Obama. That was a lot of fun. There's perks to living in Washington, D.C., I guess. And this is part of the American Credo series. Um, Those who deny freedom to others deserve it not to themselves from Abraham Lincoln. Well, let me go ahead. I'm going to post a question here. And Jeff, I see some great questions people are asking about these stamps. What does the broken chain mean, for example, on that stamp on the, the lower right corner? Um, well, interesting. What would that mean? Let's go ahead and start with that one right there. Um, let me post that to the whole group, actually. Uh, Oh, very good response, Cindy. The breaking Correct. of the chain of slavery. The chain of slavery is being broken. Thank you, Aaron. Or Rod, Rod puts it very simply, that breaking the chain means freedom. Ah, and Jeff is putting uh, a, Jeff is putting some clues in as well into this question here. Take a look at that at the top left. Cool. There's a question for you. Cool. Ooh, 
Ooh, really interesting. The blue background represents the union, perhaps? OK. I like that. That's an interesting idea. I had never even thought of that one. It's fun when we get a lot of people actually talking about these different images, because people will point out things that um, someone else might have overlooked. Let's take a look at this stamp, too. Um, I'm going to ask you a question just about this one here. Now, the Emancipation Proclamation stamp featuring the chain is actually part of the uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, featured collection series. I believe actually all, all three of these stamps are. So you can find out lots more about those. Um, here's a question. While you're typing, Jeff, we have a really interesting point here that was made on the rightmost box from Christian, excuse me, from Craig. Uh, in 1963, Congress was considering the Civil Rights Act, which passed in 1964. Interesting. Well, I wonder if that would have, um, if this would have helped propel that uh, issue forward. Not just the timing of the event, but the fact that this was also an African American artist that designed the stamp. It seems significant. Nice. David Wood, I agree. From Grove Hill Elementary School. This is cool stuff. <laughs> so great. Wayne Haney from North Branch High School writes, if the blue represents the union, perhaps on another level, the broken chain could represent a break with the union's own historical acceptance or legalization of slavery. Interesting. That's actually related to the next question I have up in the note box. Does the stamp commemorating the 75th anniversary, and I spelled anniversary wrong, um, of the Emancipation Proclamation promote the effects the proclamation had on the war? So take a look at this stamp here. And does that reflect the importance the proclamation had? What were the effects that the proclamation had on the war? Interesting. Amy Denny from Owen Valley Middle School writes, students think maybe the slave represents the slaves thanking Abraham Lincoln? OK, great. And Amanda definitely um, supports that idea. Great. There's another question for Mr. Alex Hyman. Tell us how many stamps issued in the United States feature Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Hopefully Alex is with us. And we'll see if he can post that question. He's counting right now. <laughs> ah, great. <laughs> great, thanks, Alex. <laughs> cool. Well, and that's actually one of the last questions that I'm going to have for you today, because we're focusing specifically on postage stamps from the United States. And we haven't even gotten into the collection of Abraham Lincoln stamps that are featured all over the world. What I'd like to do, um, we're having great discussions, and I don't want to um, put the brakes on this. I think what I should do is ask one more question about the Abraham Lincoln series. Um, let's do this. Uh, and I should mention, for those of you who would like to see the stamps even larger, keep in mind all of these stamps are in Arago where you can zoom in you can actually see the fibers of the that are that the uh, the stamps are made of the paper fibers oh yes absolutely you can zoom into a 100% and get a really close up view of each one of the objects in Arago and you can emphasize different parts so here's my next question why would an image of the Lincoln Memorial be used on US postage stamps what does that say about american culture so here's our little green Oh, interesting. Well, Amanda from Hoover Middle School, in relation to that last question, actually is asking what she thinks that he might be doing or saying to that slave. That's interesting. And Pearl from Harvard, uh, Hoover Middle School actually is asking the question, why did slavery start in the first place? Great. So now some of the questions coming in for this one are related to um, 
the Abraham Lincoln Memorial. What year was the Lincoln Memorial stamp issued? Actually, I don't know that. That's another question for uh, Alex. <laughs> Fun. I'm glad Alex is with us. Well, I want to go ahead. I'm going to post some additional stamps. You And everyone with us today can actually look at quite a few of these new ones. But I actually have some questions for you just on um, on the program today itself. So let me do this. I'm going to pull up a reflection page. Cool. Good. <laughs> Each one of these topics also um, you can uh, highlight. Now just to let everybody know, this stamp of uh, Martin Luther King, this is the reflection pool and this here is the Washington Monument. So it actually looks like uh, Martin Luther King is actually standing on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial looking up at the statue of Abraham Lincoln in the image here. Really pretty neat. Well, let me post some questions. I need some help from everyone here who's participating with us today and how this program might actually uh, look in your classroom. And that's going to be my question for you. Uh, Thank you, Alex, for the answer. And it looks like Jeff's uh, answer was, was uh, actually very close. You said you had about 25 stamps in your Lincoln stamp collection, and <laughs> Alex says there are 25 plus or minus one. Cool. Thanks, Alex, for backing me up. So here's a question for everyone. How would the virtual based stamp activity work in your classroom? Cool. Cool. Let's see here. Jelena says, um, it's never considered using stamps for any particular, what is that? Considered using stamps for a what? Uh, for uh, a lesson in history, but they're a timeline of our past. Cool. That's yeah, great. Great point. Cool. So early, do you want to open the poll number six? The NPM six here? Okay. Should we open it? Cool. So we've got a new poll coming in. Let's see what you liked about this different uh, project today. All right. And we'll, we'll, sorry. We'll I just moved the poll on everyone again there so we can see the chat <laughs> as well. Um. Cool. I like the fact that everyone's appreciating the uh, introduction to the U.S. postage stamps. We actually have a saying at the Postal Museum that is one of my favorite sayings. There's two kinds of people in the world. There's stamp collectors and potential stamp collectors, which is always fun. <laughs> By the way, we have um, a number of people who um, are, have asked questions about the relevance of stamps today. We even had one young learner joining us today who asked if people still use stamps. <laughs> Interesting. Yes, definitely in the day, day and age of email and text messaging, that's actually a question I get frequently. Do people still use postage stamps? Well, it's really interesting. People are always going to be sending written communication, um, and we're always going to need to be able to pay for that service. But just this last week, the Postmaster General of the United States, uh, Postmaster John Potter, actually approached Congress to see if we can lift the restriction on uh, delivering mail six days a week, Sunday being the exception. And there's a chance that we will actually be decreasing the amount of mail delivery uh, based on that lower demand. So it's definitely been impacted. That's a great question. 
And of course, just to reiterate, and we'll, we'll remind you of this at the end, uh, is there a central place to get these stamps? Yes. Um, you can, first of all, either go directly to arago.si.edu or go to the virtual exhibit hall page for the National Post and Museum right here on the smithsonianconferences.org website. And you'll not only see links to Arago, but several other uh, great research tools and lesson activities. All right. And take a look, Jeff. There's a number of lesson activities and ideas that both teachers and students have in that center box uh, where people are offering their reflections. Yeah. Great. I like that. Michelle Hammond from Stephen Decatur Middle School says, I teach biography, and I would have students include a stamp study. Well, uh, Mrs. Hammond, actually looking at that Arago website would be a great opportunity for your students to piece together. You can either do individual people, or you could even come up with some of these different topics that a number of people were actually related to. That's kind of what I was trying to do with the reflection is how are some of these different folks associated with Abraham Lincoln history? This green stamp down here in the corner is actually a commemoration of Eli Whitney, the creator of the cotton gin. Here's a question. How did the cotton gin actually impact the lives of people like Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass? Nice. And uh, Judith Jordan from Garfield Elementary School actually um, is a, a school teacher for preschool, kindergarten through sixth. We actually um, do a lot of our school tours at the National Postal Museum sorting and organizing stamps with kindergarten and first grade. And we base them all around different topics of transportation or people or flowers. So the students have to go through and pick out and build an actual collection. So this is really a topic that goes across a number of different grade levels. All right, and we are getting close to our time here together with Jeff. I so, have one more slide. Um, but we're going to go ahead and uh, and take a look at one more slide. So sorry, we just took that chat box away on the left, but you can continue to offer. Uh, your suggestions over on the left side of the screen for us, your ideas, your questions. And I do want to remember, uh, point out as well that the uh, discussion can continue in the discussions area of the smithsonianconferences.org website as well. So you can continue to share your reflections and your lesson ideas. Back to you, Jeff. I wanted to go ahead and leave one last stamp image for everyone. Um, I had mentioned earlier that we're actually only focusing on stamps from the United States today for some of our different topical ideas. But there are a lot of stamps all over the world that feature Abraham Lincoln. And this stamp here actually is from the Republic of Togo and was issued in 1963 um, on the centenary of the Emancipation, of, uh, yeah, of, um, the Emancipation Proclamation. And there's a lot of different visual imagery going on here related to slavery and to Abraham Lincoln. So we've only scratched the surface. Great. Jeff, thank you so much for. Well, thank you, Jonathan. Thanks, for everyone, for uh, such interesting feedback. I appreciate it. And I, take a look at Arago and play with stamps. Absolutely. In fact, if you're not uh, using Jeff's uh, mantra, either are there are two types of people in the world. I think after using Arago, if you're not already a stamp collector, you will definitely have your own personal stamp That's collection right. online at Arago. And you can actually send links to your collection to other people and show yeah, them. Yeah, you can email your topics to each other. So by all means. It's very impressive. Um, so again, thank you very much. Don't forget the discussion continues uh, in the online discussion area that's part of the Smithsonian Conference's website. You can click on the link to that uh, from this page or just visit the discussions tab on the site. And also there's a great exhibit hall area from the National Postal Museum on the site. And you can find a link right where you access today's session. Uh, it's also in the virtual exhibit hall. And you'll find a very special audio greeting. A talking postage stamp is waiting uh, for you there with a familiar voice. Um, <laughs> we'll let you see who that is. <laughs> we'll let you see who that is. And don't forget, we will have all the recordings from today posted uh, uh, shortly after today's activities end for you to review later. Uh, and we'll be back in just under 10 minutes with our next session. Uh, which is going to feature David Ward from the National Portrait Gallery. And we're going to be looking at faces, specifically faces of Abraham Lincoln, and to see what we can learn uh, from looking at those pictures about his life and his legacy. By the way, that session will be followed uh, by a second session talking about how we can 
take those that discussion um, from David Ward and apply it in the uh, classroom. Uh, so we'll see you in a few minutes for our next two sessions.